Hello friends and family and welcome to the Crippling Anxiety Meditation Hour. I wanted to talk about faith today and the different types of faith. It seems that on some of the spaces that I observe online, there is a distinct um, element of lost faith for some people in the present circumstances. That um, how could a higher intelligence, how could God, how could even nature permit for the kinds of situations that we're facing? And um, people are losing faith in mundane spheres as well. So it need not be the super, super mundane. It may be your government. It may be the execution of your country as a democracy. It may be the representatives that you've elected. But faith is being lost. And I would like to frame that as perhaps a good thing, that your faith, whatever it may be, should be in those things which have earned your faith. And it is, uh, it is no small thing to say that meditation requires faith. Initially, it requires the faith that it is worth trying at all. You have seen scientific studies, you have listen to people talk about their experiences, you have read books, and you've established some personal sense, intellectual sense, intellectual faith, that this is worth committing a certain amount of your time toward. And as you try meditation, it is then experiential faith that causes you to continue with it. So you are willing to put in 10 minutes twice a day for however many days or however many weeks such that you can learn about Anapan meditation. And at the end of that period, you decide this thing is worth it or this thing is not worth it. And if it is worth it, what it has gained is my faith. It is an empirical faith, but it is still faith. It is still your trust on Tuesday that Anapan meditation will be as useful on Wednesday as it was um, the day prior. And it is increasingly the case that this is a, a requisite component of meditation as your meditation becomes more serious and as it becomes more difficult. So in the case of Vipassana meditation, you are not sitting for 10 minutes, you are sitting for 10 days. And when you sit for 10 days, you begin with intellectual faith, with the faith of your friends, with the faith of books, and you say to yourself, I have enough faith in the idea of meditation to try this. You have no faith in Vipassana because you don't know it yet. So you're trying Vipassana on faith, on good faith, that your friends have suggested this to you because it seems worthwhile and um, you have faith in your friends. At the end of 10 days, you are likely to come out of the course with a certain amount of faith in Vipassana. Uh, if you had a bad course, it may be very little faith in Vipassana. Um, but even if you had a very good course, you're likely to have a certain amount of experiential faith which says, yes, I, I think that two hours of meditation per day is worth my energy and my time. Uh, and that's a relatively difficult commitment. Um, it, it is framed in certain ways which make it seem like less of a commitment because um, meditation is restful, like sleep, so perhaps you'll need less sleep and things like this. But Ultimately, you are spending two out of 24 hours or one out of every 12 hours, which is nearly 10% of your time in meditation, if you take it that seriously. And so you need to have a certain amount of experiential faith 
in the meditation technique to actually apply it in that way. This is a good opportunity right now under the circumstances of all the problems that are going on right now to actually explore the intellectual side of faith, to experiment with meditation to see if there is anything in it worthy of your experiential faith. Are you gaining anything from it? And if you do, then you will have that much more faith to try it the next day and try it the next day. If there comes a point where the meditation is failing you, like a failing government or like a failing politician or like a seemingly failing God, there is no reason that you should hold on to faith in meditation with any sort of blind confidence that it will continue uh, to help you as it has in the past. You can revisit it, you can re-examine it under, um, uh, under other lenses. You can say, oh, okay, what is different about now than uh, the time before when meditation was helpful to me? But it is important that you treat meditation as earnestly and as skeptically as you treat anything else in your life. And it is possible uh, for you to move away from that faith it is, if it is empirically the right thing to do. Um, so I'm not suggesting that you intellectualize enough faith to experiment with meditation and then build up this experiential faith which says, oh yes, now I'll never give up on meditation and all the benefits it gives. It should always be providing you those benefits or you really need to question it. And it is possible with certain meditation techniques that the benefits do diminish over time and you need to be cognizant of that. There is uh, another side to this, which is that it is healthy for us to have faith in something. The alternatives are to become a nihilist or to become uh, totally faithless, where I, I don't believe in others and I don't believe in my government and I don't believe in society and I don't believe in myself. And um, that is, a, it's not an unreasonable position to take necessarily, but it's an extremely difficult one. And if you don't have faith in anything, um, you really lose uh, any sort of foundation for your life that you can say, oh, okay, like it's 8 a.m. I can take this for granted and I'm just going to assume that it's there. Um, I generally don't think in 2020 that the internet is going to go down uh, in any major capacity. Um, I generally trust that World War III is not going to break out. I have certain faith in certain things which allow me to move through my day. And the circumstances we find ourselves in now actually tear apart a lot of that. It actually tears apart our faith in our government, in our society, in our own health, in our family, in ourselves. And if you do find that you are placing new faith in meditation as a practice, um, that is not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself, that you can use it as a bit of a cornerstone to the rest of your day. Okay, I wake up, I meditate 10 minutes, and then when I go to bed, I meditate 10 minutes and then I sleep. And this is a thing that I do, like eating meals and like going for a walk, um, a natural, healthy, sensible part of my day. It could be that for you. So I would encourage you to think about it that way. It is Monday now, and I will put up the videos to the instructions for installing the Dhamma.org app and downloading the Anupan meditation instructions if anyone is still interested in that. 
and I hope you are all taking care of yourselves and each other. I will see you tomorrow.